Good morning, Floss Tube. It is August the 11th, 2017, and after many requests, I've decided that I will show you how to finish a Shepherd's Bush stocking. This is the one that I'm finishing today. This is not mine. It's for clients, and since I had one, I decided that I'd go ahead and show you how to do it because inquiring minds want to know. All right, the things that you'll need is you'll need a compliment, you'll need your piece that's stitched. I generally check it quickly on the back after I have um, pressed it with steam because this is like burlap and you want to press it with steam. You want to be careful around the reds. You might look on the pattern if you've used um, some other color besides Weeks because Weeks is generally color fast. You don't want to get the steam particularly on the red. But you want to get it steam pressed. I used a little best press around where there was some really bad, uh, uh, you know, impressions from whatever they used to stitch the, the piece. And you want to get it generally very well pressed. I generally take a very good look on the back. You can see that this is very see-through. I take a very good look on the back to make sure there's no thread ends like right here because they will show through and detract from the finish. So I just quickly look to make sure there are none. I think that's it and then just kind of generally look through and make sure now if they have carried trailed threads from one place to another there's nothing you can do about that or not if it's your piece if it's your piece where are you oh you're right there if it's your piece don't don't carry the threads especially on open weave like that okay anyways look 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 and make sure everything's okay once you know everything's okay we're gonna turn it over and when we turn it over in a little bit I'll show you what I'm going to do next okay so after you go over your piece and you press that you want to make sure that you have your quilting cottons for this piece I'll show you how I, I chose the navy I think the navy really makes it it pop the navy dots and then on the inside, these are big stockings, but on the inside, you want a lighter color because I don't put interfacing or, or anything on, especially on these uh, Shepherd's Bush pieces. And I'll tell you why. Because with all these embellishments that are on these, it'll have a tendency to pull the linen and you don't want that. So, um, I just, I, I don't interface these. Plus, these are pretty stiff anyways. And the um, piping that we're going to make is going to even give them more substance. So, I don't interface these. But because I don't interface these, you can see how see-through it is. If you put a dark colored fabric behind it. Okay, see that? How a dark colored fabric looks. If you put a light colored fabric behind it look see what a difference that is it just brightens the whole piece so you want to make sure that your inside lining of your stocking is just the broadcloth that's what I use a quilting broadcloth and I usually get an ecru ivory color for insides that makes it not dark so when the presents are in there they can look in and see what their presents are they're not hidden in a dark cave all right, so this is my lining. I have two pieces of it, okay? This is my backing. I have one piece of my backing. And I generally cut these the same size as my stocking. This is so big, you can't see it all on camera, but they're generally the same size. Just, just start off that. That is wasteful. You'll have some 
waste, but in the end, you'll thank yourself. So I'm gonna set these to the side. Now we're gonna work on our stocking, okay? You flip it over. You can see there's no like back stitched outline or anything like that. There's nothing, I mean, you can see the general shape of the stocking, but when I'm sewing, I like to have a line to follow so that I can get the curves in and make it perfect. So how I do that is if they've sent the pattern, which this one has, whoops, sorry, you can see on the pattern that there's an outline, okay? So I set that beside my place and I generally follow that shape. Now then, what I'm gonna draw on the back with a pencil is the outline of the stocking. That's the line that I'm gonna sew on. So I don't care that I'm using just a graphic, a graphite pencil because it's gonna be in the seams and nobody will know that I've used it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I like to have, you can see that on the picture, they have about an inch, I would say, above the name. I like to do an inch as well. And I'm gonna do, you can see here on the picture that's probably, they don't, you know, probably about a half an inch away from the sides of the stitching. And that's generally what I do. And I just draw it out. So that's what I'm gonna do right now as I'm going to measure about, with my ruler, with my see ruler, I'm gonna measure about a, an inch from the top and I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna trace my top place where I'm gonna sew. Okay, there it is. That's gonna be the top of my stocking. Now then, this is the back side of the stocking, opposite on here, it's the back side. And you can see that Shepherd's Bush makes their stockings very almost blockish, not too rounded on the heel, really. And so I also do about a three-fourths margin on the sides. line all the way down okay so we got our line across the top we got a line along the side now then I'm going to get that bottom and <clears throat> the bottom you can't really see because there's stuff around there but um, the bottom I'm going to do the same and it's and it's flat the bottom's flat too so I'm going to do about a three-fourths inch from the very bottom stitching and I'm going to draw my line so now we've got like just basically a big box okay I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to curve this right here <clears throat> and I you can see that it's just gently curved there and so I just basically draw it in. So I'm gonna be coming down here, sewing, 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 and then turn right here, okay? We won't, we won't be doing this, all right? Okay, we come over here to the toe. Augie. Say hi, Augie. <laughs> okay, we're gonna come around here to the toe. 
and the toe is, see it's like a great big C, but we want to know where that C is going to touch, so I go three-fourths of an inch away from the furthest stitch. and draw a little line right there okay and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to draw three-fourths of an inch away from here now you don't want to get into the into the stitching so I just kind of do it right around here because I don't know where that curves gonna be okay just so that I can see and then three-fourths of an inch away from the sides. Okay. So that's what it looks like. I'm going to curve this toe. So I'm kind of looking at the picture too because I, I want to make sure that I do it pretty much like the picture. Okay, so here is my stocking. You see it? That's, that's what I'm going to sew. And if you see, that looks generally pretty much like what the real stocking looks like. Okay, so now then, I'm going to go around and I'm going to cut a half an inch seam allowance further beyond this, okay? So I'm going to do that. It's just a half an inch beyond this drawing. cut that out all the way around and then I'll be right back all right I'm back so you can see that I've trimmed down my sides to an half you know around a half an inch all on all the three sides okay up here I didn't cut anything and the reason I didn't cut anything is that I'm gonna fold it on this line when I sew it like that and that's gonna be my finished edge and I don't have to do any sewing up here, okay? Okay, so once you have that done, I'm going to go iron these quickly because I've got some wrinkles up here. I'm going to iron these. I'm going to stack them like this. Iron them, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I have these ironed. I have them stacked, okay? I have my pretty, which is going to be the backing, face up, okay? Okay. Behind my backing, I have two layers. These are pretty sides together layers because this is going to be the inside of the stocking. So the outside is on the back, on the top and the bottom, okay? The pretty side is on the inside, okay? I have them stacked, all right? Now then, when I sew, I'm going to sew pretty sides together. So you don't want to put it like this and cut it out because then you're going to have the ugly side on the outside. 
You see what I mean? And the reason is, is the direct of what direction this toe points. So since when I sew it, I'm going to sew it wrong sides out, then when I turn it inside out, it'll be right. So you want to make sure that you cut, cut it, cut the outside backing with the pretty side together. And then that way it's always right. Okay. Now remember, I did not cut the top, so we are going to cut this out exactly as this. This is our pattern, okay? Making sure everything lines up. I'm going to put a pin to hold it. On the top and on the bottom. And we are going to cut right along the edge of this stocking, okay? Let me cut right along the edge. I'm just going to cut right along the edge, okay? Let me do that, and I'll be right back. All right. I've cut out my fabrics. They're still pinned together. And for right now, we're done with this. So I'm just going to fold it over, set it to side. The next thing we're going to do is the Shepherd's Bush Ladies put, you can't hardly see it down there, right here. That's a piping. We need to get our, um, our terminology right about sewing, what embellishments are. This is a piping, a handmade piping that goes all around that, all around. What that means is, is a piping is a cord that is covered in material, okay? They have special piping cords um, in all different widths and sizes. And um, I just get my cording at a sewing shop and um, I go to work. So, okay, so we're gonna do the top front, the top, it goes all the way around. I put about an inch over to, to make up for the curves in it, like that. Hold it, go down, hold it. This is, this is the length for the top. Still holding it, I do the outside of the stocking, kind of just laying it around the outside so I know the length that I need. Back up to the top right here. I'm going to clip it. Oh, where's my lighter? Oh, here it is. Hint, you don't want your recording unraveling, so you just fire it and stick it together. And then it won't unravel. So that's this is the length of cording we need for our stocking. Now I'm just going to fire the end on my other one. Twist it first so those all those fibers stay together. This is nylon. It won't work on cotton, but on nylon you can do this. And most cording's nylon. Okay. All right. So we're done with our cording. We can set that aside. Now then. This is the cording we're gonna make into piping, okay? Let's talk about piping, how we're gonna cut piping. A lot of people think, oh, well you just take your fabric and you wrap it around and sew it like that, okay? That's wrong. And the reason why is, is that think about a stocking. Look at all the curves in a stocking. Fabric that is not cut on the bias see you can't curve that it's stiff okay so we want to cut our stocking or our, our cut our material to cover our um cording piping to make piping at a 45 degree angle you will see 
let me move you down if I can. You will see here these lines, okay? This center one is a 45 degree angle line. You can see that it tells me that 45, 60, 45, 30. I wanna cut on the 45 degree angle. So what I do is, is I put my cord, my cording, I put my material squared, I, I cut a piece of square material. First of all, that's important. Cut your piece of whatever material you want for your piping, cut it in a square, okay? Then you just line it up on your cutting mat. I'm gonna lay it, my cutting mat, I'm laying it square, okay? I know, I'm gonna show you how I do it at the bottom here. See right there on the bottom, I have it just squared on that diagonal. I'm going to cut this at the 45 degree angle using my rotary cutter and my ruler, okay? So I'm, I am lining it up. And I try to cut from the very, for, down right at the corner, okay? I'm lining it up and I'm gonna cut it, okay? And how I cut it, right like this. I just hold it, start cutting. I'm fo following the 45 degree angle. Once you make this first cut, it's easy after that. Okay, so now we have two pieces, okay, two pieces of triangles of material. Now I'm just going to cut two inch strips following the line, lining up my ruler on the two inch line right along the edge of that triangle. Okay, there's my first strip and I just go ahead and, and cut strips the same way out of all the rest of the material. All right, now then I'm going to take these strips and we're going to go sew them together and you're going to see how I make cording, I mean piping. All right, just a minute. Okay, I'm back and we're getting ready to sew our strips together to make piping. I've already done a couple just to get started, but the whole premise behind this is that we're so when we cut them in squares, you know, I had the square first and then we cut them into strips at a 45 degree angle. When you get done cutting, each end has like an angle to it, okay? So you have to match, you have to match the angles. So like it's a box. See how it's a box? Okay. And you want it about mm, a fourth of an inch down from, leave about a fourth of an inch here at the top and down here, this, this tail hanging off. And the reason why you want that is because when you sew it, and this is, we're gonna act like my fingers are the sewer, is the sewing machine. See when you pull it up, it is like pretty even on the sides. That's what you want. So you put the right sides together like this at an angle, so at 90 degrees. See, 45 and 45, 45 plus 45 equals 90. So we're making a 90 degree sew here, stitch. Put it on the machine, and you're just going to sew right along that edge, okay? See, 
see how that's sewn together. We'll do um, a couple more here. This 45 degree angle right there. Will this one work? Yes, it will. So we're putting them together. We're leaving a little bit at the tip. We're going to create that square. I'm going to look. It's pretty good. Remember, we left a little bit at the top. Now we're going to sew that straight seam. They don't have to be perfectly aligned along the edge because that's going to be in the seam of our stocking and nobody cares. All you want to care about is the covering of the cord. Okay. There we go. All right, now then, I'm gonna see if I have enough cording. So I've got my cord, I've got enough length here. I think I do. I've got my cording and I'm just gonna see if my cording, I'll do it on this side. We're not gonna wrap it like this. I'm just seeing if I have enough length of material so I can stop sewing piping together. Bye, Bye. have a good day at school. Okay, I have more than enough. All right, so how we're gonna do this is now, we're gonna get rid of these extra strips. We're going to put our piping foot on. This is the piping foot. Okay, this is the piping foot. It has little grooves underneath the foot and it snaps onto my machine right there. So I'm gonna take my regular sewing foot off and I'm gonna put my piping foot on. Okay, now then, you get to the end of your material and I'm gonna fold it over, okay? Okay, I folded it over. I tucked my cording on the inside. And I got the, the, the sides to match, okay? That makes it a clean end. Now then, we're just gonna start it underneath the cording here. We're gonna put the cording covered in material on the outside's groove of this foot, okay? We're gonna sink our needle. Now then, you wanna hold this tight because you don't want loosey-goosey piping. You don't want material to be loose. So we're gonna hold this. We're gonna start sewing. Wait a minute, let me check to make sure. <laughs> I'm a little anal about this because I don't want it. I don't wanna have to Okay, so I've got my cording, wrapped it around the edges. I put it in the groove of my piping foot, put down my presser foot, sink my needle, and I'm gonna start sewing. And all I'm gonna do as I sew is as I'm gonna as I sew, I'm gonna hold this down here so that when it feeds through, it's very tight because you don't want loose material. You want your cording to be tight in the little sausage casing that we're making of piping material strips. Okay. And like I said, the edge does not have to be perfect because that's going to be in, sewn into the seams. Okay. 
Okay, you can see, here's what the piping looks like as I'm sewing it. See, it's tight. You want it tight against there. You don't want it like loose, the material loose. You want it tight. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish making this piping and then I'll be right back. So when you get all of your piping sewn, it all looks like this. Remember we started with a, a clean edge on the beginning. You go through, make all your cording. And on the end, I just sew out and leave, I leave it unclean, okay? Because we don't know where we're going to end and we'll need some extra material to fold over to make it clean, okay? All right, so we got our piping, we got our piping, we've got our stocking and lining cut out. Now then, what else do we need for a stocking? We need a hanger. So the next thing we're going to make is a hanger. And remember these extra strips that I had? That's what we're gonna use to make our hanger, okay? So give me a few minutes to get set up with that and I'll show you how I make my hangers. Just a minute, please. All right, I'm back. I've got some of my extra strips that I had made, I had cut to do my piping and I'm not gonna waste these. I'm gonna use these now to make my hanger for the stocking. Now then, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the strips and I'm going to fold it in half, okay? And I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to iron it. That's all I did. I felt folded it in half and I ironed it, okay? Now then, these are raw edges, okay? And I'm going to make bias tape to bind those edges and make it pretty and perfect. So I'm gonna set this to the side, okay? I'm gonna get my bias tape marker, my bias tape maker out. These are two inch strips, if you remember. And they're cut at an angle, which is exactly what we need to make our bias tape. I'm going to make, I'm going to use the biggest one, which takes, as a matter of fact, a two inch piece strip of fabric, okay? And how you do this is, I'm going to hold my little, pull my little holder up like this, hold it like this. I'm going to feed it in underneath that blue piece right there, like that, okay? I'm going to take my awl, they provide an awl in the kit, and you just start pushing that out like that where it comes out. Get it started, and then see how it comes out folded like that. As it comes out, you iron it. So I've got it started here, I'm going to hold it with my fingers, and I'm going to iron it. Okay, there it is. comes out looking like this, okay? Now I'm gonna fold this over again. So where that middle is, I'm just gonna fold it over. And I'm gonna iron it. And I've just created a bias tape, which I'm gonna put along the edge of this at my sewing machine and sew it down and it'll make a pretty edge, okay? Let me get back to the sewing machine and I'll show you how I put this together. All right, we're back at the sewing machine. I have my bias tape and I have my piece of material that I folded over and ironed. So it's the raw edges there. 
folded over and ironed, okay? To make this pretty, we're going to open this bias tape up and lay this right along, right along the inside, fold it over, and I'm gonna machine it all along the edge. That will clean, make that both edges clean, okay? I gotta change my presser feet. I'm also gonna change my stitch count uh, to three, because we don't need this to be tight. So I'm just gonna sink my needle right along the edge of that bias tape that I made. And I'm going to sew. I'm going to trim the ends. And these ends are going to be raw ends, but they're going to be down in the seam of the stocking, so it doesn't matter. You can see, maybe, where is it? See? Now they're both sides are pretty and that will be the hanger for the stocking. All right. Okay. Now we're going to get ready to assemble the stocking. I'll get back set up and we'll get going. All right, we're back ready to assemble our stocking, okay? Now then, to assemble the stocking, I have taken apart the stack. I have my front of the stocking. I have my back of the stocking. The inside, I have kept together and I've pinned all the way around so that later we can sew that. But for right now, we're not messing with the lining. We're just gonna fold it over and set it to the side, okay? Now then, to add our piping, okay? How I think about it is, is that it's going to be a sandwich because we want it on the outside of the stocking when we're done. So it has to go in between the two layers, the pretty sides. This is our raw edge. It's going to follow the raw edge of the stocking. This is about a half an inch, half of inch, which is, if you remember, my margins that I cut for sewing was a half an inch. So we're just gonna follow the cording along our cut edge and pin it, okay? So I'm gonna start up here, but before I, I do anything, I need to fold it over. If you remember, I folded it over so that we have a clean edge at the top. And so that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm just gonna finger press it, okay? And make sure that I hit that line. Make sure that it's straight on the front, that I'm following that line of linen so it's not wavy. Okay, see there? All right. And I might put like just a couple of pins at the top to keep that down. Okay, now then. We just follow from the front. Okay, now I did that, I folded it into the inside because you don't want to fold it on the outside because then it would cover up Camden. See what I'm saying? Okay, so now I pull it out on the front side and I add my piping all along the edge, starting with the clean edge, okay? Let me clip these hair, these uh, strings here. We're going to pin it following the curves and see how nicely the, the cording, see how nicely the piping curves because we cut it on the bias. See how nice that is at an angle? Okay, I'm just going to pin it and I'll do a few and then I'll do it and come back. But I'm, this, 
Remember we cut half inch margins and this is roughly about a half an inch. So we just follow the outside edge, okay? As you pin it, you kind of look, is that following, is that, is that going to include all of my, my stitching along the way? If not, then you want to move it out further, you know, however, however you want it. Okay, so there it is. That's the beginning of me pinning. Let me pin all the way the rest of the round and I'll come right back, okay? I forgot to mention, when you get to the curves, okay, to help this curve even more, you just make, you just cut some triangles out, almost not into the seam of your core, of your piping, but almost into the seam. This is curved all along the toe, so I'm going to cut all along here with my little triangle cutouts so that curves nicely. Okay, see? And now you'll see when I pin it, see how nicely it curves? It curves really easily because we cut out the bulk of that, okay? And you just pin along the curve. So I just want to tell you, when you get to a curve, you cut little triangles to debulk and pin. Okay? Let me finish and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And they're all pinned. Now you'll see I, I went away from the edge here. And that's because I wanted this much space on this much space. I wanted equal spaces, see? So, when we get done sewing, I'll trim that, but for, I'm gonna leave it for right now. It's all pinned, you can see around my curves, I have my cutouts. Clip the curves, it's called clipping the curves. Okay, so there's my stocking. Now then, what I suggest doing at this point is going ahead and sewing this cording on. Then we can lose all these pins and then pin on uh, the backing, okay? So let me get over to my sewing machine and get set up with my piping foot because we will use the piping foot to sew this on. And then I'll show you how to sew it on and then we'll come back and sew the backing on, all right? Let me get set up and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine. And before we start sewing, I want I neglected to mention something to you that I need to mention. Um, you can tell that right here, I have like the material just above the edge. And so I always fold that down to make a clean edge on the cord, on the piping. Okay, and just pin it. Same thing over here, I, the, the cording is right at that edge, okay? So I cut it, the inside of the piping is cording, right? And I cut that cording and leave just a little bit of material, about a fourth of an inch, to go across the top of our, to the edge of our stocking like that, and pin it. And then that'll sew it down and make it a clean edge, okay? I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. Okay, so I'm gonna put a pin here just to hold those that edge down. All right, so when we start, we're gonna put it in our piping foot, 
sink our needle. Since this is sort of just basting the piping on, I'm going to make my stitches long. So in case I mess up, which you always hope that you don't mess up, but in case I do mess up, if I have just basting stitches on this cording, it's easier to pull out and not ruin anything. So I changed mine, you can't see it, but it's changed to 3.5 stitch width length. Okay, I sunk my needle, I'm gonna start. And all you do is follow your cording where you've sewn the material onto the cording. You just follow that line and sew it onto your stocking top. You want to go slow because this will be the guide for when you, we put our backing on and you want to go slow to make sure that it's perfect because this will be the shape of your stocking this will be this is it this is the guide the road for the way your stocking is going to come out kind of want to make sure you got those curves in Now when I'm coming up here to the top, the cuff, the fold over cuff of my stocking, you want to slow down and make sure that you cut that because you're going against kind of the grain and it's coming up. So I want to make sure that I catch it and I did and then we're going to come and I'm just going to let it catch that underneath material and then as it sews, pull that pin out. Okay, there we've got our piping sewn on. And you can see that I pretty well hit my where I drew before to get the shape. See, that looks like your classic already, your classic shepherd's bush stocking. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our liner, now then, We've got to, I've got to make the top edge clean. So what I do is I put this on and I start at the toe and the heel, so the bottom. And remember this is cut the same as our topper. So you just match it and pin it. Okay, so I'm just going to match this stocking and I'm going to pin it and I'll be right back. All right, since I've been, talk, since I talked to you before, we had basted our, our piping on. Now I put the backing to the front. I ironed the edge down of the top so that it matches the front, okay? I pinned all the way around my stocking and you wanna make sure that it's tight against the front so there's no bagginess in the in the backing. I have the cording foot on. You will see that the the piping or the pipe I have the piping foot on. You will see that the piping is like a road map. Okay? And we're just going to follow that road map to sew the backing onto the front. Okay? So I got it loaded on, sinking my needle. I have my stitch length shortened because this time we're sewing for construction and there might be very heavy objects in the stocking and we wanna make sure that it's sturdy enough to hold very heavy ob objects. So you want the stitch length to be shorter, okay? We're gonna go forward. We're gonna go back to lock that. And now we're just gonna follow our roadmap. And as we follow, we're wanting to make sure that we keep this tight, okay? Just follow our road map, keeping it tight, going slow around the curves, okay? Let me get the backing sewed on to the front and I'll be back. All right, it's all sewn together. We're gonna clip our 
hey, our uh, strings, our dead ends here. And before I cut anything else, I always take it inside out to make sure that everything looks the way I want it to look, okay? This is very important. Before you clip any curves or you do anything, you want to make sure that it looks the way you want it to look, okay? Because we can't put material back on once it's cut. Okay, so here is the way it looks. And let me look at it here instead of looking at it in the camera. And look at the piping. Beautiful on the front and on the back. All my seams are good. I check all my seams to make sure all the curves are perfect and they are so after I see that it looks good on the front I check the back it looks good on the back now I'm going to turn it back inside out and we're going to clip down the margins We're going to clip the curves more. We're going to put down, we're going to cut down the seams. So when I cut down the seams, I'm just going to take that down to about a fourth of an inch all along that seam, okay? Up here at the top, I'm going to cut at an angle because we've got lots of stuff to do here. So I'm going to cut it at an angle, kind of like what we do when we're making a uh, pillow okay cut those down that's the first thing we do then we're going to go all the way around about a fourth of an inch okay let me do that see all i'm doing is cutting it along the edge about a fourth of an inch okay let me trim these edges and i'll be back and i'll show you what i do last all right, I have trimmed my edges now. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to, I don't have a serger, but again, I'm building for construction, for sturdiness, and so I'm going to zigzag my edges all the way around. So I've got my regular sewing foot back on. I'm going to... Do the zigzag stitch. I'm going to sink my needle and I'm just going to zigzag all the way around. And this is just something I do just because I want to make sure that I give my clients the most sturdy, best product. I can give them. finish my zigzags and I'll be right back all right you'll see that my edges are zigzagged all the way around now we'll turn it inside I'm going to clip all my if you see any straggling threads clip your threads because you don't want them to show through the front marring your finish Good. Throw those away and turn it inside out. Let me turn it inside out and then we'll set up for my next part. 
Okay, you can see here that I have my stocking laying out on the liner, the inside lining. And the dimensions will change as you sew. And to debulk the inside so that there's not all this gobby stuff in the hem on the inside of the stocking, I always lay my stocking, my finished stocking down on top of the lining that I cut and I trim off the excess, okay? So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just trimming off the excess. Then I'm going to fold the top part over, one on each side, you know, so like one will be folded this way, one will be folded this way, so that you can get into the stocking. I'm gonna get it to match this top, okay? And I iron it over, pin it all together, and then I'm gonna sew it around just the, from starting here, going all the way around and ending here, okay? Let me get this cut out and ironed, and then we'll come back to show you how I sew the lining, okay? Just a minute. All right, I've got it trimmed. I've got it pinned. I've got the tops ironed back. So I'm going to sew just around the outside edge here, leaving this front open, because this is where the kids will get in to get their stuff, okay? Making sure the front and the sides back are perfectly square. I'm going to change out my thread to ecru to match the lining. And I'm going to sew starting on the top corner all the way around till I end up at the other top corner, okay? You're going to reverse to make strong those seams. Let me change out my thread. Let me sew this and then I'll show you what the next step is. Okay, I've got the lining sewn. Remember, we don't have to turn out or anything because, um, because we don't have to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim close to the seam, the lining. I don't serge this because it doesn't need serging. This part doesn't. But I do like to debulk because I don't want as much bulk in the, in the seams, in the hem, since we're going to have essentially four layers. So I just go and I cut out the extra material all the way around, and then I fit it inside my stocking. Okay, let me do that, and then I'll be back. Okay, you can see that I've got it trimmed along all the sides of the stocking, or the inside lining. So I put my hand in down at the toe, okay? and I grab it, and I kind of wad the whole bottom of the stocking in. The whole so the stockings into my hand, the lining. And I put it inside here, and I start down at the toe, and I spread out my hands where the toe liner is, and I just kind of work it down, okay? Okay, so the lining's in there, all right? Now, I'm going to match my seams, make sure that that fits perfect, see? Perfect. Now I'm going to get my piping and we're going to pin it all along the edge. Let me get the piping, start pinning it, and I'll show you how that goes together. Okay, I have my piping, what was left over from the outside. I've got my lining inside, and now we're gonna just focus on putting the piping around the outside top of this stocking. Okay, what I do is, I just, the, the outside of the stocking, the burlap part, linen part of the stocking, the lining's in here, but I'm not catching the lining this time. I'm just lining up the piping first. You wanna get a piping, you don't want to join your piping in the front because that's where everybody looks. You want to join your piping in the back of the stocking, okay? So I get a pretty piece of piping where there's no joins or anything like that, and that's what I want to put in the front, okay? See how that's going to go right there. And um, I'm going to put that in there and pin it right, right along the edge of the front of that stocking, okay? Let me do that all the way around to the back 
and then I'll show you how you join so it looks seamless. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I have my piping pinned all the way around to the back side here. Now then, I've got to add my hanger. And how I had my add my hanger is I have my hanger and I want to put it right kind of on that top corner. Okay? Cuz you want your your stocking to hang like this, right? Okay. I put it right behind the piping okay that's where I hang that's where I tack my hanger so you want to think about what a good length of hanger is you don't want it too long I'm gonna cut this excess off I'm gonna tuck it behind the piping in the side Okay, and I'm going to pin that in. Okay. All right. Now then, this is gets really bulky because now I'm going to have to put my piping on on here too, but we'll just go behind we'll just pin it behind the hanger okay so I'm going to take the last pin right here before the hanger then the stocking hanger comes and you want that to just line up right tuck right behind the seam okay you just want to tuck that right in behind the seam all right and then pin that and I I'm going to try to pin the seam down as well as the hanger and then that way that won't be so bumpy okay and then we're going to put the piping on top of that because you want that sandwiched see now I'm going to pin right here I want to hold all that in. I'm going to pin along here. I'm just button that piping right up along the edge of my my stocking material top. And I pin it, okay? Just keep on. That's how I did the front. That's how I'm doing the back. Back to where I want to join them, okay? Okay. So Here's a piping end, and here's a piping end, okay? I want to join them, so I'm going to cut this piping end off right here, all right? I'm going to throw this away. Now then, I want to join them, so I know that this cording inside here ends right here, and I want it, the other cording to end right where this cording ends, okay? So I'm going to put a pin right here because I know that's where I need to cut that, okay? Okay, where's the camera? Right there. See, that's where I want to cut it, so I put my pin right there. But I'm not going to cut there because I need this extra material. So I'm going to go up about an inch or so and cut here, okay? All right? Now then, throw this away. Now then, I'm going to take my seam ripper and I'm going to rip down to where that pin is. I'm just taking out all the stitching along that cording when we made our piping out, okay?
now then, right where that pin is, right there. Okay, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut this off. Not the material, just my cord, okay? Right where the pin is. Don't cut the material, just cut the cord. All right, let's see if that matches up. It does. Now what we're gonna do to join this, okay, here's all, there's the cord that I cut. I'm gonna fold this over like this, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin this last part where I cut it down. Then I'm going to fold this down to make a clean edge. Okay. And then I'm going to catch the other side of the cording like that. And so that'll be double wrapped. I'm going to butt those two pieces, ends of the cording together so that we can have a seamless piping. And then I'm going to pin it. And when I sew it, it'll be seamless. Okay. You kind of just have to work to get that finagled together right close. So that's, and it's hard to do holding it forward. It's easier to do when it's on the, on a table. All right, can you see? See where we joined it? We joined it right there and pinned it, but you can't tell unless you really look hard. So that is the cording all along the outside, okay? All right, now then, we've got our hanger, we've got our cording. Our, po uh, <laughs> our piping, okay? Now then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that liner that's fallen down in the bottom of the stocking, and we're gonna get it back, the edge back up here at the top. Okay, so find that, and you're gonna get it all snugged up, okay, with to hide the interior the nasty part of the piping, okay? You're gonna get it all snugged up. And so then when I sew this cording on, it'll just be one stitch and it'll catch the lining, the piping, and it'll finish the edge, okay? So let me take a few moments just to, all I'm gonna do is pin that lining with the, with the piping, okay? And then we're gonna sew our last step and it'll be finished, we'll have a stocking. So let me take a few minutes to do that and then I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I have the inside lining pinned with a thousand pins. <laughs> and I'm sticking myself a thousand times. I've got my machine loaded with Ecru thread. And uh, I've got my machine loaded with Ecru thread in the bobbin and on the thread bobbin, okay? Spool. And we're going to sew this front. First, so I'm going to start on the left hand side of the stocking and I'm going to load my machine carefully. As carefully as I can, I'm going to start it right at where the linen is. Put down my presser foot, sink my needle. I am going to go with a th three 
with stitch and lock it and then you just sew pulling these as you go you're catching whoa slow down you're catching the um lining the piping and the front of the stocking and so i want to kind of check to make sure i'm catching everything i am over here to the edge of the linen. Right over here to the edge of the linen, right up to the edge of it. Okay, and we're gonna stop, we're gonna lock it. Okay, now then, I'm gonna pull this off. And you can see that my lining is so, so, sewn in there and it's sewn across the front. I'm gonna clip all of these threads. Okay, now then, the inside is ecru, right? The outside back here is navy blue. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm, we're going to top stitch in navy, and the bobbin is going to be ecru. So, I'm going to take out, I'm going to take out my ecru spool and put on a navy blue spool but leaving the bobbin in the bobbin case ecru. Okay. So let me take a scrap and sew on a scrap so that you can see what this is going to look like. Let me find a scrap here. Okay. So the top is navy, the bobbin is ecru. Let me just show, let me sew a line so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so see, the top is navy. The underside is ecru. Pretty snazzy, huh? Okay, so now then we're going to start at the hanger. Get to this piping and just go to the linen and then we're going to back up and lock it. And there, my friends, I've sewn that in very tight. The piping is on. I just need to go over it, clip all the threads, and give it a very good steam press, and then you will see the finished, completed stocking. We've got it. It's done. That's how you do it. There will be a picture at the end to show you what it looks like all in one piece in a better shot. I hope you enjoyed this, even though I'm about ready to pull my hair out. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye-bye.